This podcast is brought to you by SciFi, the world leader in psychology fitness training. SciFi is scientifically proven to help you optimize your physical, mental, and emotional performance through functional training of your brain, body, and breath. For the first time, have your own clinical psychologist, personal trainer, life coach, breathwork teacher, and mediation instructor all in one. Instead of having to wait months or even years for results, you get them in 75 minutes or less. That's the sci-fi difference. Rewire your brain, retrain your body, and refocus your breath. Learn more at psyfi.nyc. It's been said, you, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit to keep moving forward. That's what Life's Tough, Boxers Are Tougher is all about. I'm your host, Matthew Pomara, and we explore a mountainous challenge that someone in the boxing industry has had to face. Today in the guest corner, he comes to us from Queens, New York, by way of Derry City, Ireland. With an impressive record of 29 wins against only two defeats, with 18 big wins by knockout. He also has 12 acting credits to his name. Please welcome to the podcast the former WBC Continental Americas champion and the IBA middleweight champion, Ireland's John Duddy. Thank you. you Pleasure to be here. Uh, It's great to have you, man. This is uh, quite a, quite an honor. You're uh, I I love the fact that you are still, your fights are still on TV. I told somebody that you were going to be on the podcast today and they said, oh, yeah, he, he's great. Well, who's he fighting next? I said, no, he's retired. He said, no, he just fought the other night. I said, no. That's, that's, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, the Madison Square Garden still get the, still have my fights out there. And a lot of people enjoy watching that station, thank God. And, uh, I mean, it, it's been a fantastic uh, – it was a fantastic experience being there and, and still they sort of reap the, the rewards of it, you know, and they, they seem to keep me uh, – pretty relevant you know it, it, it's nice yeah and, uh, you were uh one of the top draws at the garden um you know you're the c- kind of uh the king of the theater part of the garden the old felt forum so um really you know you absolutely crushed it in the garden so huge huge draw pretty cool oh but uh do you know what i came around at a great time there, there, there was no one Oh, I came around at any time, I suppose. that There wasn't any Irish fighters around at that time, you know, and boxing was, you know, is always busy in New York, you know, and, like, outside of America, the garden's only known, basically, for one thing, and that's boxing, you know. I, I know it's a lot different by living here in, the, in America and, and in the city, you know, there's basketball and ice hockey and, and concerts and stuff, but, like, you mentioned Madison Square Garden anywhere else on the planet, and it's, like, boxing straight away so they so that they, they be lucky enough for people to say oh that was your home for a time with and being a, a man from Derry city now that, that that's pretty uh that's a nice achievement they look back on and i smile i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad i had it i was very lucky uh, well you did a great job you were absolutely outstanding and uh you know one thing i always i think the best compliment that you could ever give to a boxer is uh you always gave the people their money's worth right so there was never a time where you were like uh, you know, it wasn't a great fight. You always gave the people their money's worth, win or lose. So, uh, very impressive. Well, I was lucky in the garden. I never lost once. So, yeah. well, probably I fell out with a wife once. So, maybe I lost that battle. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, uh, I know it brings back great memories, you know. And uh, it's funny, like, it's over, what, it's 11 years now since I last bought. I think it's 11, 12 years the last time I boxed in the garden. And, and people ask me, do you miss it? And, and I think about three or four years after I quit fighting, I would have been like, no, no, I don't miss it. Da, da, da. You know what? But I, I sit back now and I look back and it's like, of course I miss it. It was a, it's brilliant. I was loving my dream. You know, it was a fantastic time. But do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> the, the sacrifices, they get you there. I mean, uh, it wasn't just my sacrifices. It was my wife's sacrifices and the people around me and things like that. You know, um, uh, you know, it wasn't just a, a one horse show. There was a lot of people that, that, that were around me that, sur- that surrounded me, and uh, there was a lot of ups and downs on it. But uh, I mean, it, 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 I never look back when I was doing it. It's only now when I look back and and they hear the reaction and, and people 
no, they give me a thumbs up and say fair play to you, man. Uh, it, it's a, uh, I feel honored. Well, well, it's well deserved. And uh, look, I was going to put it in your introduction, but uh, I don't want to totally mislead the uh, the audience. I said, look, he, he fought Roberto Duran at Madison Square Garden, uh, but it was in a movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fantastic. Uh, you got yeah. So you got you got to fight Roberto Duran in a movie. At least you got that. Yeah, you know, that was terrific too. No, th- to be honest with you, it's amazing how uh, close that. Uh, never would I believe. I remember when I was a kid. My dad was a professional fighter for a short time, but the main guy on the on the stable at the time was Charlie Nash, and Charlie Nash was a two time European champion, and basically stayed in Ireland and Derry training with his local friends and whatnot and uh, he fought Jim Watt for the world title he lost but he beat Ken Buchanan for the European title in the 70s and Ken Buchanan who did a lot of traveling he won he won his world title in Puerto Rico way back in the late 60s I think and uh whenever uh when it, my, my dad has a photograph of Ken Buchanan and it's signed to John Francis and Michael, best wishes, Ken Buchanan. And that's still hung up in my dad's house. And then, what, 30, 40 years later, I get to portray him in a movie. And I'm like, I'm playing the guy. My dad was a sparring partner of my former trainer, beat him for a European title. And, and now I'm in sparring with, well, sparring, I've choreographed fighting with Edgar Ramirez, who did a great job as Duran. I mean, it was a... Very surreal, so it was. It was a brilliant experience. Yeah, that was cool. That was really. Good. I love that. I thought it was a very underrated movie, and uh, I think that's terrific that you were in it. Um, and I loved uh, that you were in uh, the TV show Lights Out. That was pretty <laughs> cool. And the fact that yeah, the fact that you're out there acting. What else are you doing these days? Um, at the at the moment, uh, I just had a a, a movie uh, the which was supposed to be released last year, but with the pandemic and no cinema, we had one cinema screening in Chicago, which was great to be sitting in a big theater to see it. But unfortunately we, we missed the run of going around the theater festivals and meeting people and stuff like that there. Uh, but a band the river, it was a uh, shot all back in the North of Ireland and Tyrone. We, we it was just released in October on Amazon prime and Google, and there's an, uh, a YouTube, I think you can watch it on as well. So that's out there, and uh, I, I've just been in talks with uh, a few different guys of a few potential projects, hopefully this year, and basically just been doing auditions and submitting, and my little tiny home here, or you know, do a video, looks terrible, and then you send it off, and you never hear about it again. So I miss the, I miss the, the one-on-one uh, with people, you know, being in a room, there, there's a, I don't know, I think sometimes there's a, an advantage they have when you can get in a room with people, there's a connection, like an energy, and uh, so hopefully, if we're, if we're going to get past that, hopefully there'll be more work for me acting-wise in the near future. Excellent, excellent. Um, hey, what was the name of that movie uh, that people can find? A Band in the River, sort of. Nice. It's actually the same name of an old Jimmy Stewart movie, which was a a Western way back, I think in the fifties. So it was, but it's nothing to do with that movie, even though Jimmy Stewart's a legend. Uh, this is all based about a, a writer, uh, an Irish writer who's been in New York for 26 years. And he's suffering from writer's block and a few other demons, I suppose. And he finally returns home from being away for that length of time to sort of face the ghosts that he ran away from. Wow. All right. We'll definitely have to check that out. Um, so, you know, the name of the show is Life's Tough, Boxers Are Tougher. Uh, tell us why you're tougher than life. Um, well, uh, I suppose growing up as a kid, you know, I, all, my, all the fights I used to watch were late at night on the TV with my dad. Um, a lot of them were in New York. I know, I know the Vegas and whatnot came, but I had a, we had a great video collection as well of like Robinson and Lamada and Marciano and Ali and Frazier. And, you know, like uh, I, I remember coming to America when I was 13 with a boxing team. And, and I just always was like, if I was going to turn professional, I wanted to come to New York or America at least. And uh, I remember when the amateurs, 
uh, we went to the Europeans and I, I, I got stopped in the fight with a point system and I was totally disillusioned with the with the amateur game. I was like, I've got no chance. It was a, it was a, it was very just disheartening and working so hard. And when you're coming back to the corner and your cornermen are telling you, you know, you're doing well, you're doing well. He's not hitting you, and then you, you hear the whisper, he's five 0 behind. Right, go out, do more. Second round, you come back, you're doing better, you're making a muss, you're landing. He's ten nil behind. It's like, and then in the last, and then the fight gets stopped in the third round. And I was kind of like, you know, if I'm going to continue fighting, this amateur game's done. I'm not. I was never. I would have liked to have fought in the Olympics, I suppose, just because my heroes, Muhammad Ali, did and things like that there. But it was like it wasn't always the the goal. It was to turn professional. And I had a few friends that turned professional and went to England and. In that experience, I was looking at at them, and they were kind of one of one of the many. And I always wanted the opportunity to maybe go to America to do it, you know. And I, I had a national, I had a national title, but I wasn't an Olympian. I wasn't a European, uh, no gold medalist or anything like that. There, you know, I was just an, an average guy with a a decent sort of boxing background. And I suppose I, I I had a friend that worked in construction, and the guys in construction were boxing fans, and they were interested in seeing me, so I jumped on the flight, came over, and you know, one thing led to another. They wanted me to go to the gloves, which was I had to wait another year. I told them no. I says I'm here to fight pro. I says if you no, know, I need to pay the bills, and that that's all I'm here. And if not, then that's it. Boxing, boxing's over. Uh, it's done. Um, I had my first fight in September. I think it was t- September twenty third against Terry Grashid, and. Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, boom, got on the map. And I just remember thinking, like, because I've had friends that were much more talented than me. And the Irish team, they won four and five national titles, medals in the world championships and, and things like that. They're like real established guys. And, and I was like, you know what? I got I to gotta find this. I'm not one of many. I got to go. And, and I had the opportunity to come to New- America and New York. And uh I just, I just always remember and back home as well. I'd be like, oh, sure, we'll see you in a few weeks. You know, they always, when you leave home, they reckon you're going to come back. And they don't mean it in, in, in a bad-hearted way. It's just that usually that's what happens. And I remember people saying, you no, know, it was an old boss of mine, and says, do you really think you can do what them guys do on the TV? And I remember looking at him and telling him, yes, I, I do believe that. I do believe I can do it. And... Um, and the other bit of help that I had was that my, my girlfriend, my wife now at the time, Gronya, was a cashier in a supermarket. And I says, I have an opportunity to go to New York to try the boxing. Would you come with me? And she says, when do we leave? And uh, 20 years later, we're still here. So we are. And, uh, you know, I, I think what a lot of people, you know, they'd look at me and, 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 and say, well, that wasn't really a struggle, but... Or it wasn't an obstacle, but but it was. I wanted to love. I wanted they I was lucky enough to find out what I wanted to do, and I knew where I had to go to find to do it. And I've been very fortunate with the boxing fans and New York as a whole because whenever I came here, I never got homesick. I never felt like I was out of place. I never felt like this was a foreign country. I mean, I couldn't get over the, the Irish connection and how proud people are to be Irish and associated with Ireland because where I grew up in the north as well uh, no if you were seen to be if you were seen to be doing that you'd be people would be thinking that you would be like a, a, you know boasting or slabbering no being and, and usually that would instigate some kind of uh, reaction from some someone else and it was never about that and I think it was, it was the first time where uh, whenever I came here it was just like wow this is this is home. This is where I can actually be myself and not, and not be snow. Because for years I used to tell people I did a little boxing, and a friend of mine used to help me and say, "John, how do you pay the bills?" I'm like, "I, I fight. Where do you fight?" I said, "Madison Square Garden." You don't do a little bit of boxing. You're a fighter. He says, "That's that's what you are. Why are you afraid to admit it?" You know. Um, and I, I know that this is a very general thing, but I think that there's a 
that, that obstacle and, and admitting that, that who you are, what you want to do, and, and they have the courage and the backing to go for it, to go and chase it down. And uh, like and, 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 and even though when I walked away from it, I was only a professional for seven and a half years, but people said to me afterwards, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do in New York now? Or what are you going to do in America now? Are you going to go home? And it was kind of, you know, this is kind of my home. I mean, I'm, I'm going to, there's a lot more opportunities here because I was offered a lot of things when I was fighting, but I never wanted to get distracted from what I came here to do, which was to find out how good I was. And they hope no, they try and win a world title and, and pursue that goal. And I took it as far as I, as I could, you know, and uh, it was a great journey. But then after that journey, it was like I sat back and all of a sudden, the, the people that still saw me as a boxer, I mean, it wasn't, you always hear this, oh, you know, you got to stay relevant, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to keep pushing. And then people never forgot me, you know. I, I've been lucky enough, I, I've, I've done, I've been a bartender, I've been a waiter, I've been a construction worker, I've been a commentator, I, I'm now a fitness trainer again. I, I, I'm enjoying going back into the boxing gym and working with people and giving them a bit of, my experience and hopefully helping them where it's physically or mentally or you know and it's, it's sort of i'm finding that it adds to me and i've always i've, I've never felt like since i've been here that it, it's always been like oh you're gonna go home home is always there home is there home's a place where we go to rest and take comfort on new york is is is, is a part of that extension you know so uh I mean, I, I just feel like from coming from my humble background to come to New York and living a humble life here too, but that, I mean, it's not too often you, you get a phone call from Robert De Niro to be in a movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, if I, if I had a move back to Derry, I doubt I would have been getting that phone call, you know? And uh, I just think that the, you know, the, the obstacles of being away from your family and loved ones and, you know, your friends and the people you grew up with, I mean, I love going home. We were home for Christmas. It was brilliant. Even though the pandemic's kind of kind of messed things up, you know. Um, but it, there's always something at home that refills you, you know. But then when you get back to New York, it's like like the, the, the beginning of the year. It's like, okay, what, a, what opportunities are going to come my way now? What obstacles, you know, bring it on. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, and from the boxing side of it, that's what it, you go back to the black. Every time we fall, we get back up. And I love it. Like every year, it's like an hour closing of a chapter. Get back into the gym, work on what, what, what you failed on and improve what you're good at. And whatever, whatever comes, bring it on, you know? What was the, uh, what was the hardest part when you came over here? I mean, it, and again, it, I think it's extremely brave to leave your homeland to come to a, a new place, especially New York. Of all the places, New York has such a uh, such an intimidating presence. If you've never been part of it, uh, what were some of the challenges that, like you know, when you had left and you came here, what were some of the challenges you had? Um, I suppose, uh, you no. Know, when you come anywhere, you always feel like a like an outsider, so to speak. You know, and especially in, in, in any community, and you know, like uh, you know, nationality is one thing, but you know, a boxer coming over, and I remember going to Gleason's, and you no, know, basically the, and uh, I suppose it was there for a few weeks before there was ever even sparring. But it was like, oh, here's an R, here's an R, no, blow one, here's an R guy. He's going to be here, and then he's going to get a taste, and he's going to leave. You know, and uh, I remember that June, they wanted to see me fight at least, so the, there was a the metros was on. And I, I was like, no problem. I'll do the, I'll do the one. Like you know, I'll fight amateur once, but I want to, I want to, I want to be. A, I'm here to be a professional. If not, I can go home. And uh, even looking back now, I'm kind of going, wow. Like I did not know anything, and I don't think it was whether it was bravery or just pure ignorance. <laughs> I was just like, I need to find out. I need to. I want to know if I can do this or if I can't. But I had that first fight in Gleason's gym in the metros. And I was the guy that they were supporting. All of a sudden, 
it was like I was one of their guys. You know, all the, the, the Gleason people, they were like, oh, no, that's our, that's our kid. That's our Irish lad, you know. And all of a sudden, I was like, ah, I'm on. I'm on the group, you know, I'm on. You know, and then the sparring sessions and the trainers and, I mean, that that's a, it's a family. It's a, it's a, it's like it's a fraternity where it's not all laughing and joking and slapping in the back. It's, it's just a little wink and a nod. Good to see you again, because you know you basically live in the gym. I, I no, all, all them guys, all them great successful fighters, and even the guys that aren't successful, you mightn't have heard of. They all live in a gym somewhere. There's a gym where they go, and someone knows what they're going to say before they even open their mouth. You know what I mean? You, you find out that. They know your routine better than you know than you know it yourself, you know. And uh, I think that uh, I was lucky that way. Where all of a sudden I found I, I never felt like I was I was too out of place for too long, you know. Uh, once you sort of earned that uh, that letter of you know, look, I'm not a blue one. I'm I'm here to I'm I'm here for real. I'm here to find out if I can do this. And they were kind of like, oh, okay, son, you're one of us. That's that's cool. We, we've got your back, you know. That's that's amazing. It's a great story, and I, I try to explain that even though it's one on one, it is a real team sport, boxing. Mm. Because you yeah. have to have a support system. You know, as far as support system is concerned, tell us a little bit about uh, how important it was that your, uh, I imagine your girlfriend at the time, not your wife at the time. Uh, how important was it that she came with you? Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 it was completely. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to achieve what I did if I was on my own. I know that for a fact, um, because we went through a time in the near the, the near the middle of my career, around the late teens and the early twenty fights. My wife had visa problems, and uh, which had all been rectified since. So we have, but it was just unfortunately, it was bad management. It was things just weren't getting taken care of that were supposed to be, and uh, I remember and. I was fighting in the garden, and I think I knocked the guy out in the first round. It was a body shot. And I just remember after the show, when everyone's slapping and cheering, and they're all in the change rooms, and half of them, you don't really, you only see them that one time. You've never seen them, you know, all, all of a sudden. These hanger-ons that you hear about, it's not me. They were hang well, they were hanging on to me, but it wasn't me. It was the they had their own little group. And I remember thinking, I'm going back to, to this empty apartment again on my own and when you're in training camp and stuff like that too uh you know like they, they have that voice they have, like we used to go up to pennsylvania which isn't too far away so even the, every now and then after one or two weeks or three weeks if I, if I was getting a little bit i could always go back and touch base and grind you be there just they left me head up and say here we're still here don't worry but it's not that serious come on you know don't be getting because it's for it being a lonely sport, like it's a, it's a big psychological uh, take on you know. Because at the end of the day, it really is you no. Know, there is a team, but at the end of the day, it's all on you, you know. And and you keep yeah. distracting yourself from that point. They, ah, I'll be all right. I'm good. I'm fat. I'm da 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 da. And them quiet moments sometimes the most negative noise you hear is yourself. So to have somebody like Grania. Even if it was days coming back from Gleason's and I just, I was sparring and for some reason nothing was working right. And I've got these kids that are basically, my nose is sore, my head is sore, but they come back and, and be able to, they know that, look, that you're all right. Don't worry. You get up tomorrow, you'll go back and you'll see the same guys again. And, you know, you sort of, I wouldn't say take revenge on them, but no, you, you're you'll not be, you know, all of a sudden what you've been working on will work a little better than it was because you have your off days and stuff, you know. And uh, I just think just, just having that, waking up in the morning, that, that's one of the reasons why I packed in the boxing too was because I used to love going to training camp. I used to love going away and out running around the hills in Pennsylvania or, or North Carolina and, 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 and you no know, training and just, just eat, sleep, train. Love that. And then all of a sudden, it was like I'm waking up in that empty bed, and I'm like, oh. no. And you can't, no. I don't know. I'm like, I can't bring my wife to training camp. That's not fair. That's not right. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, it's training camp. And uh, I remember even for the Chavez fight, I got the stage. Well, after the first two weeks, it says, "Harry, pack it up." 
going back to New York. Sure, I trained there long enough. I says, I'm not waking up in an empty bed no more. No, I, I can't do it. You know, uh, Gronje was sacrificing as much, if not more, than what I... No, I was in... Oh, it's all on me. She was in an empty apartment on her own while I was up there, you know? So I think it was totally... Uh, it was invaluable. I wouldn't have been able to do it if she wasn't beside me, you know? Well, I could tell you this. You definitely have proven, uh, you know, very eloquently, as I, I knew you would, uh, really, you know, making that journey, the importance of a support system around you, um, and listen, it was, it was a hell of a career. You did a, you did a tremendous job. And, you know, I, I think one thing, a compliment I can pay is that you didn't stay too long. Right. Yeah. So a lot of guys stay too long. Um, and you didn't, and, uh, look, now you're, uh, now you're going to be a big time actor, man. So that'll be pretty cool. And I'll get some well, on the podcast. We'll keep working on it, you know? So we will. That's one thing that says about the acting is that no, the, no, uh, I don't mind. No, getting criticized. I can always go back to the draw, back to the gym or, or the acting class and work on my technique. But if somebody, no, no, wants to take it a step further, I can always go back to my old job and see them after the show, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great, that's a great way to do it. And I hope uh, we're going to, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do the fast five. Uh, ah. so here's the five questions. Right. And I'm hoping that you don't uh, beat me up after it. So it'll be I'm not going to beat you up. I, I, I just thought about them far too much today. I swear to God, man, you shouldn't have sent them to me. I, I, I'm far, I wish I had got these questions 20 years ago. I would have been bing, 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 bing. <laughs> well, we'll definitely. And, I'm, and, and by the way, I am going to throw a curveball too, so you should be good. Um, okay. All right. So you played hands, You played Ken Buchanan in Hands of Stone. Uh, any other boxers in history you'd like to play in a movie? And uh, what was your favorite boxing movie? My favorite boxing movie was Somebody Up There Likes Me. It was Paul Newman playing Rocky Graciano. And don't get me wrong. I love Rocky. I grew up with Rocky. Whenever the first Rocky came out, my mom and dad first started dating. You know what I mean? And so Rocky was in our house all the time. Me and my dad, I was Rocky. My dad was Apollo Creed. He was down in his hands and knees when I was five. Do you know what I mean? I, I mean, the, the, like, and look how long, look, look, look how many years Rocky and then going into the Creed story as well. Yeah, I, I remember growing up, even when I came to New York, I'm the pro bar. Oh, I'm not Rocky. I'm not Rocky. And you know what? I'm kind of thinking I should embrace that a little bit more, you know, because it's a fantastic story. It's an f- amazing story, you know. But uh, I, I, if there was anybody that I would like to get, uh, if there was somebody I would love to portray, um, I don't know, myself. <laughs> Story, I, 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 do you know what? You I always, but, when I was a kid, but I always, I always used to pretend that I was Muhammad Ali or Sugar Ray Leonard or, you know, and don't get me wrong, pretend because you've seen the way I fight. I ain't a pretty dancer, you know, but I can act like that, you know. But uh, I always remember being asked to you about, no, if there was anybody that you would love to fight, who would it be? You know, and I says, okay, I would love to meet the guy that invented insurance. Because I would beat the living crap out of them. <laughs> because you pay all that money and they never pay out, you know? I, I'm, I'm dying to tell my wife that. I'm going to absolutely <laughs> tell my wife is an insurance. I'm absolutely. <laughs> oh, no! She's going she's, she's to love that. That's the guy, I, but not the guy that sells it. It's the person that invented the idea of it all. That's me. That's who. All right. Tell me Everything that. insured. My God. <laughs> Good, good thing we don't have insurance spo- as a sponsor. We would be in big trouble here, so that's good. Well, good. We'll bleep that out. <laughs> uh, tell us your favorite St. Patrick's Day ritual. My, well, that's enough. You see, there you go with these questions again. What age, you know? It's just a, No, it's a, Unfortunately, in America, it's usually going to work. But do you know what? My, my new ritual is usually what we did as kids growing up was just that the family would get together, we'd go to mass, and then you'd go have dinner. It was like another Christmas day. And that's just to have family around. And over here in New York, you have, Guanyas get some family, and, and we have our adopted family. So just getting together with friends 
and having a few drinks and a nice big meal where you eat too much and you fall asleep if there's sports on. You know, that that's that's the that's the, the enjoyable ritual I, I like, you know? I like it. I like it. Uh that's a great answer. What is uh if you if there was any superpower, uh what superpower would you like to have? See, this is like the father. Uh superpower. Yeah, superpower. Um Kind of, uh, I don't know. I would, I would, if I could be Superman, I would love to be Superman. But he's got a pile of superpowers, you know. And the only reason being is that he's got them all. Um, but like, if I, if there was one thing I could do, I would love to end people's greed. If I could end human greed, that would be good. I think that that would be the the one thing I could try and maybe if I was able to just take that away from every human being in the world, I think that would be a nice superpower. I'm going to tell you this: you're absolutely crushing the uh, the fast, you know, the fast five. You're I thought I was taking too long, to be honest with you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Yeah, it's not as fast five, but it's pretty fast. We're doing good. We already said if you could share the ring with anybody, it would be the person who invented insurance. So we've got that answer. So I'm going to throw a curveball. In okay. So my other – who could win in a foot race, you or Maureen Shea? Maureen Shea. She'd be you in a foot race. You think so? What kind of race? A foot race, like running. Yeah. Yeah. The female yeah, yeah. species is the dominant species. Female side – you see, this is the thing that I remember being told. I remember this. When I first came to Gleason's, I refused to get in the ring and spar with our female rivals. Because when I grew up, dads didn't take their daughters to gyms. Yeah. Not because boxing's not for girls. It's because they already knew how to fight. We <laughs> have to be taught. No, you don't mess with. My wife looks at me, and I'm like, oh, Yes. My mom had the same look. The female species already is a. There's a lot of. There's a lot. You can't teach a man what the female species is able to do. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I'm. I know my. I know where my bread is buttered, as they say at home. And yes, that's the winner. That's a good answer. All right, tell us a clean joke. A clean joke. Oh my God! I, yeah. Um, What I, I can't even remember it now. What did uh, do you know what Fraggle Rock is? Yeah. What did the Fraggle Rock say when he got to the top of the hill? Tell us. A Muppet, a Muppet. <laughs> there you go. That was great. That was great. My wife told me that and it just came to my there, she's saving me again. Her voice is in my head and she just I just whispered it into the ear and I'm like <laughs> well i can't thank you enough that was terrific where can we uh where can we find you on social media i am on uh instagram and twitter and facebook um D jf duds is my name on it the duds uh, jf is john francis jf and the duds is duddy but you drop the y and put up an s as a kid, when I was growing up, I was always known as Duds. So it was, that was my nickname, you know, because there's a lot of Johns and stuff like that. So, But I'm on, I'm on uh, as I say, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, uh, JFDuds1, usually. And uh, you'll see this ugly mug probably in the photograph as well. And if anybody is bored on a Friday night or a Saturday night or any night, if you want to tune in and watch A Bend in the River, which is available on Amazon Prime, Google Play and YouTube, so it is. Uh, I'd, I'd appreciate uh, your feedback if you if you check it and watch it out. Give us a wee comment or a wee thumbs up, uh, and if not, uh, just tell us what you think. Well, we'll definitely check it out, and uh, I'll try to check it out tonight. Actually, we're looking for something to watch, so it'll be on our list. Cool. Um, and then, uh, and also, if you want to see uh, some of John's fights, since he's on TV more than the fighters who are actually fighting now, uh, you can check him out on the MSG Network. But you can also, on YouTube, 
um, when we were researching for the podcast, uh, a lot of your fights are, I mean, I saw a lot of your fights, uh, from, you know, live, but, um, a lot of your fights are on YouTube really. Uh, and again, definitely worth the watch. Well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I was, I was very fortunate. A guy reached out to me from Columbus, Ohio, asking me if I had any more, any fights. He had 19 to which I informed him. I have none. And, 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 and in that conversation, he says, well, give me your address. I will forward you CDs. And I says, I will not. I says, but give me your address and I will forward you a signed photograph and write my address on the back of the photo. And six weeks later, the CDs came to my house. Gosh, so had, just a just just a, a boxing fan, you know, in Columbus, Ohio. I couldn't get over it. And I was like, wow, that was like two years ago. So I've got 19 of my own fights and I'm kind of like, yeah, you know, at least hopefully some, and he sent a hard drive as well. So in time when I'm, I'm not, no, as critical or I don't know, I very, I'm just too critical watching my old fights. I, I just, I, all I see is what I do wrong, but someday I'll be able to sit back maybe and enjoy it. You know? Well, you had a heck of a career and you should definitely be proud of it. Well, thank you. John Duddy, Ireland's John Duddy. I can't thank you enough for being on the uh, on the show, and uh, we're we're so happy to have you. Thanks again, pal. Thank you very much, Matt. It's a pleasure. That's going to be the final bell for today's podcast. If you like what you hear, give us a like and hit the subscribe button with your best power punch. You can check us out at Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere you can find quality podcasts. We hope our stories inspire you to fight on. We thank you for listening, and remember, life's tough. Boxes are tougher. Have a great week, everyone.